It isn't uncommon to use a random number generator to add unpredictability to a game. In many cases, it's enough to just get a random number within a certain range, which is easy to do in Unity. But what if you want a certain outcome to have a specific chance of occurring? For example, you may have enemies that have a chance to drop loot when they die. You likely want items of higher rarity to drop less frequently, but the random number generator in Unity can only provide numbers with uniform probability. That means all the outcomes are equally likely to occur. Let's look at how you can level up your random number generators and give yourself more control over the randomness in your games. But first, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to see more. When we need to get a random number in Unity, we turn to the random library. You may be familiar with the random.range function, which will return a random number within the range you specify. If you use integers to set the range, then you're going to get an integer back, and this is just like rolling a die where each side has equal probability of landing face up. Keep in mind though that when you're using integers, the max is exclusive and the minimum is inclusive. That means that if you want to model a standard six-sided die, where you can roll one through six, you need to call random range and give a minimum of one and a maximum of seven. You can also use random range to get a random float value just by providing floats for the parameters. In this case, the maximum is inclusive, so we don't need to worry about increasing the maximum to get the actual range we want. It's also worth mentioning that if you're getting a random value between 0 and 1, you can also use random.value instead of random range 0 and 1. When we use floats with random range, we get something that approximates a continuous distribution, which means we can get almost any decimal value within the range, but each of the outcomes still has equal probability. Let's reconsider the example of enemies that drop loot. We can say that there's a 20% chance that an enemy will drop a common item. So we're going to need a result from the random number generator that has a 20% chance of occurring. If we generate five random numbers, each one of those numbers has a 20% chance of occurring. So we could use random range and give a range of zero to five, and then say if we get a zero, the enemy will drop a common item. But what if we also want a 40% chance that the enemy doesn't drop an item? We can add an else if to our statement that says if we get a one or a two, we don't drop anything. But then what if instead we decide it should be a 50% chance that no item is dropped? Now we have a problem because there's no way to split the five integers evenly to get a 50% chance. One option is we could increase our range to 100 and that would give us more options. But then we run into the same problem if for some reason we want a decimal in the percentage. If we instead get a random float between zero and 100, we can say that the value has a 50% chance of being less than 50. Now we can say if the number is less than 50, the enemy won't drop an item. Now to show how the rest of the outcomes will fit into this if statement, let's draw a number line that goes from 0 to 100. We can put a mark at 50 and then indicate that any value below 50 will mean no item drops. We also wanted a 20% chance that a common item will drop, so we can say between 50 and 70, a common item will drop. And we can continue this for the rest of them. So we'll say for uncommon, we want a 15% chance. So between 70 and 85, rare will be 10% from 85 to 95, and legendary will be the last 5%. Now we can use this line to build a new if statement that covers all of the different outcomes. If the random number is less than 50, we get no item. Else, if it's less than 70, we get a common item. Else, if it's less than 85, we'll get an uncommon item. And this continues until we have all of the items covered.
One last change we can make is to divide all of these values by 100, and now we just get a random value between 0 and 1. This is a start to the system, but if we wanted to change the drop chances, we would have to go in and change some hard-coded values. So let's look at how we can make this more reusable. We want to make a function that's going to return an index to tell us which outcome we got. We also need to pass in an array of floats that holds the probability for each of the outcomes. The first thing we want to do is get our random number. And since we need a float between 0 and 1, we can use random.value. Now we can create a for loop that will loop through as many times as there are outcomes. And for each probability, we want to check if the random value is within the range for that probability. So let's create a threshold value that we can compare to. At each step of the loop, we add the current probability to the threshold and then check if the random value is less than that threshold. If it is, we'll return the index and we can use that wherever we need it. If we make it all the way through this loop and the random value wasn't less than any of the thresholds, then we need to return a default value of negative one so we know there was a problem. I put together this scene to show that as we generate more outcomes, the probabilities will approach what we set them to. Keep in mind that in many games you'll see a specific drop chance, like 1 in 100, for all of the items in the game. Players commonly think that this means if they get 100 drops, they should get at least one of that item, but that's not always how it works out. So sometimes game developers will lie to the players to meet their expectations. One way you can do this is to say the item has a 1 in 100 chance of dropping, but each time the player doesn't get that item, the chances of getting it next time increase. You should be able to balance random numbers in your games now, so if you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.